Hello and welcome to the second part of this video tutorial, the mixing tank or the static mixer, whatever you want to call it. So basically we're working in this geometry and let's use now the second method, okay, which is the this one that we have here, the stream wrap method. method. And previously we used the topology base, we moved to this one. Uh, the important thing is to understand when to use this method. So usually we use it when we have dirty geometries, that is geometries with holes, too many features, okay, small gaps and so on, that since that are difficult to solve using this, this method. Later I'm going to show you one case now and maybe you're going to get a better image. So if you have a clean geometry, a watertight geometry coming from a, a clean CAD, don't waste your time, go and use this one, okay? This one you use when you want to defeat or many details. So let's use this one. And as you saw, you set up the same parameters as previously. Okay, we have the global parameters, but then we go to the specific parameter of this model. Okay, let me choose here also surface mesh. So this model, the specific parameters are, are this here. So I'm not going to address this these parameters here. Later, we're going to, to modify a little bit the mesh to show you how this works, but basically, with this method, you can control now if you have holes, gaps, and stuff like that, you can close that, you can put a tolerance. Okay, and then you can choose where to do your mesh. So you have a few options here. So most of the time, largest internal. It is okay. This will be kind of equivalent to open phone and just to clarify something, I'm making the, the analogy compared with OpenFone a lot because many users once would, 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 like, would like to use Anova for OpenFone and after all here also we have this tab to set up OpenFone cases. So later also we're going to set up this case, but I will try to do a lot of an analogies comparing you know, what we have in OpenFone, namely Snappy X for meshing and then what we have here the different methods that we have in Innova. So this stream right will be very close to, to, to what you have in a Snappy X mesh. And these options, I was telling that this largest internal will be equivalent to the location in mesh. So this kind of will do the mesh inside this body. Then you have external will be kind of outside, not properly that, but it will be the, the analogy. But most of the time, largest internal, it is okay. So let's do the mesh. Okay, nothing else to set up. You click here, okay, and now you go into meshing. So I have everything. So we have exactly the same parameters from the previous case. Yes, and I'm going to override that mesh. And this is what we have, okay? So this is our string wrap. Um, basically what we're doing, imagine that you are wrapping a GIF, okay? You are wrapping your geometry using your global parameter. So this is kind of give or take a mesh that will try to solve all the features. It's not as as beautiful, precise, exact as the previous method, but in this case, that is a simple geometry it will work fine. So this is what we have, and you you, you can get many many analogies now to a snappy X, X mesh. You now when you have here this collapsing there, and also you will suffer of the same problems with the feature edges. So in this case, we have a mesh where we capture everything, but if you are missing a feature edge, you are going to see that it doesn't resolve that. We, we saw that in the previous video, how, how to get those just in case that you are not capturing that. So after you have this, okay, you wrap your body, you go to the second uh, step. So from this step, you don't go, the steps to generate is always surface to volume, but you don't go to the boundary layer or the volume mesh right ahead, you need to go to the second one, which is remesh or refine your mesh. You have this initial mesh that is capturing all your features. And when you click here, you are refining that mesh. You are smoothing everything, but keeping the features. So see that you have all these features, the edges that are well resolved. So see that difference when you go from the wrapping step to the remesh. So it's a, a smoother mesh. If you compare with the previous one, the original one, this, you will see that there are a lot of similarities, but it's not exactly the same. So this is the idea. This, that is what, what, what you are doing. So you can imagine in this step when you wrap, and if you have holes and so on, within certain tolerance, you are going to cover everything. You're going to eliminate those, those features, negative features. So take a visual snapshot of this. So this is wrapping a step. And then when you remesh, this is what you get and a smoother mesh. This is what we're doing. And then the next steps are exactly the same. You add your boundary layer and then add your volume layer. Nothing changed. I'm not going to talk 
about that. So you might be wondering, okay, but what is happening here? Why do I need to use this? So let me show you. Recall that in the previous video, we used an STL and when we were generating the mesh, okay, and see that in this case, let me leave this like this. So when we generate the mesh, you will see that it's not going to snap to, to that intersection. And let me go and put everything zero one like we were previously just to reproduce here and 18 surface mesh. So if you recall, there were some features in the geometry that the meshing tool, you no, know, the method topology was trying to resolve. Okay, remember there are some features here. We are not capturing this here also, so see that it's not perfectly resolving that sharp angle. Now let's see what happens if I use this one. So where I'm going to use exactly the same parameters global. By the way, also when you do wrapping, you can apply, you know, refinement in edges and so on. Now look at what happens here. You wrap and you are not resolving, you are not capturing those problems that you have in your underlying geometry. So now you can imagine that you can have a, a, a cat geometry, very complex, that you have many faces, edges, and that might give you problems when you are meshing using the topology method. So there are some tutorials that we're going to work that to show you that. But it's not always fantastic to have uh, a pure cat model. It's you have many many features in, in that model that can give you problems. So this is what you are using to eliminate those features. And now you go into your next step, now remesh, and everything is a perfect, smooth, nice mesh. All these feature angles see that are perfectly resolved. Here you are not resolving because you didn't, you didn't capture that, but see that in the process of remeshing, it is smooth in that. So, Another analogy to snappy hex mesh. Remember the surface feature stride. I want to recall how it's called now. Now that is what it's doing. But in snappy, you have problem. There are some cases that it's not perfect, but here in Innova is perfect. Doesn't matter what you have. Just capture those feature edges and it will perfectly snap your, your mesh to that. And uh, actually you don't have problems because it's a surface to volume meshing tools. So the initial mesh is constrained to the surface. So there is no way that you are going to get those problems that you have in a snappy, which is snappy is a volume to surface. You start from our volume and then you go down to the surface. And to remind you here how to capture those feature edges is you means that you click in the geometry and here you have uh, create feature edge and just change the angle and that's all. So now I hope you have a better idea when to use this kind of, this method. So now let me do another modification to this one. So let me erase here. So I'm in the mesh and something, another feature that I really like about Innova that you can manipulate the meshes, the surface meshes, you know, you can smooth, smooth move node, nodes and so on. So these are these options here. So let me show you that I'm going to select this face, this face, this face and this face. Uh, okay, let me do this select, something like this. Right click and delete selected cell. So, so you can see I create an artificial hole in my surface mesh. So I'm going to use now this surface mesh as an input to do a mesh. And this is a very, very, for, very powerful action that you have here, utility, that you can convert this surface mesh, I can convert it into your geometry. So look at that, you have this action here, mesh to geometry. So your surface mesh to geometry. Let me click there. Now, if I go back to geometry, I have my new geometry. Recall that we started from the complete STL, but now I just import it. So that is equivalent that like saving the surface and reopen the surface, but in just one click. Exactly the same geometry. Remember the color coding of the edges. So everything that is black is nice. That is what we want. And when you have something red, it means that you have a hole or the surface is not connected that we have here. And this is a problem. Okay. If I use, uh, in this case, the, 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 the topology based method, it's going to work. Okay. The surface mesh, but it's going to see this feature. So now if I try to grow a volume mesh, I'm going to get an error because you have that hole. So now let's see what happens if I use this method. Let me use this method. I'm pretty much, I'm going to get that hole. Okay. 
uh, totally is covered. So see that you are wrapping and you cover that hole. So to control that, and actually I think, yeah, maybe, okay, da, 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 got close. So usually you control that and let me go back, let me close here. And we have this hole and you can go here and measure a distance, okay, uh, here from here. So that hole have a distance, something about 0 0.08, maybe. 0 0.01, 0 0.1, you measure the largest. So 0 0.1, so what you can do is you have holes and you know that distance. You can come here and in this one, what get close tolerance, you give that, that tolerance. So let's put 0 0.2. So basically you are saying everything below 0 0.2 will be close. Okay, and let me close there. Uh, let me click there and now this is it. The mesh here, the hole was automatically closed. So you are wrapping like wrapping a gift. So Christmas season is closed, so you can start to practice a little bit. So for instance, if I go here, I put 0 0.05, the tolerance is less than that hole. In theory, it shouldn't, shouldn't close that, it should remain open. Let's see if it remains, actually see that it's remaining open because I put a tolerance very low. And if I put it here, 0 0.1, the precise tolerance, well, probably was a little bit larger, no different here to here. Let's see, it doesn't work, okay? It's a little bit larger, 0 0.12. So I think it is a fluke that if I don't put anything, it's working. Probably there is a default parameter that is a little bit larger and it managed to close. So see that it's closing that. So let me go back, let me put nothing there. And it's closing. So maybe there, there is a default auction that is closing the, the, the whole of the default distance. Okay, so this is the big advantage you know, for this method. What you can do when you have very dirty geometries and you can imagine that that may happen. Now, sometimes you get those nasty STLs and now I'm going to rant a lot about STLs. Do not use STL, those are horrible format. But from time to time, there is no way okay to ch to use something for instance you have 3d scans geometry that's the only format that you have and that's it i go now you can go remesh and you solve all your problems but you're going to have some issue well look at that it smooths there so everything nice and you call close the hole there so the next step boundary layer and so on they apply exactly in the same way so I hope now that you have a better idea when you use this method, okay? They're only dirty geometries. Or if you want to use it, you are free to use that method. I don't use it very often and I try to, to, to stay far from this method. So now let me show you a case that actually is a tutorial that I'm wor working on. For those waiting for, for an update for overset meshes, using open for analysis fluent and working in a nice geometry and let me show you bam 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 ta, 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 ta. where do i have it so you can get a good idea when a good case to use the surface wrap so here we are we have the geometry the rubber chicken i really love this geometry and uh, as I say, this is now for the overset meshes cases, the tutorials or coming tutorials with open from fluid. Uh, I would use, I would put the chicken in motion, something like this, and then it would rotate. In any case, let's <laughs> come back to our tutorial. So what I was telling you that you can perfectly use no, the any of the, 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 the topology based in, the, in this geometry, but you're going to see that we're going to find a lot of problems, okay? There are some gaps on there that we don't see. The mesh is leaking somewhere. Probably you can have some normals oriented differently. So there are many issues there that it, it might be problematic, but let's create a mesh and let's see what happens. So let me get a, a reference dimension. So probably uh, bum, 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 something six and two let me put six and two uh 18 well, like this and well all triangles and we go here topology base 
and we're going to see what happens. So probably I had too much curvature refinement in this case. Oh, okay, we have it there. So we have a mesh and you might say, okay, it worked. Perfect. Well, let's, let's take a look. So see that all those edges that you have in your, in your geometry and um, pinch points now where you have a small edges and so on. The topology base tends to follow that mesh. Here also, as you look at the geometry, maybe there are some edges, very small edges there. So let's see the actual geometry. And look at there. So it's trying to resolve to follow all those features. So as you can see, it's not always positive to, to, to resolve all features. It can be, it can translate in a, in too many cells or probably those cells can reduce your, your mesh quality. But I already saw some other problems. Well, here the mesh is closed, but close here, you can see here that you have a gap. And look at that, basically you have two different surfaces connected. And this is a big problem. And you have your gap there. So if I go back to the geometry here, I cannot see it, but I know that if you repair that, select this one, you can intercept. Maybe it will, okay, it became black. So it's repairing, but it's not necessarily going to fix all, our, all errors. So maybe there are some similar errors somewhere here. So clearly you can see that this is a big advantage using this method, but well, probably you, you, you have many errors like that and it's too time consuming fix that, or if not impossible, you see that here you have another error. So it works, it gives you very good mesh, it resolves all features, but it might be too time consuming fix that. Even if it's a small geometry, it is tricky. Imagine that you have complex geometries that will be very time consuming. So this is when it becomes very handy this one. So now let me use this. And by the way, if I try to create the volume mesh here, it's going to give me an error and let's do it because you have an opening and the mesh is leaking. Okay, so it fails. Instead, if I go here, we wrap everything and when you are wrapping everything it's going to go over those small gaps and those errors that are not going to appear anymore and you can see here that those features that we were having previously that it was resolving those small edges you don't see any more that you are defeating everything in the process of doing so you may lose some information as your topology but you gain something easiness of mesh generation and you can get a little bit here you can get close or you're, you're feeling like okay this is what a snap is doing and that's why it's tricky to control a snappy or why you don't get no perfect meshes or it's not perfectly to the surface because it's using a similar technique now i click here because i need to refine so when i refine likely it's going to improve improve the the quality of the surface mesh get better resolution like, mm -mm, we have it there and see that since got a little bit better not so much better but you get the point that if you made a smaller cells you can resolve you no know, all those and so on but it's nice it's a nice mesh and at this point you are done likely the back quality cells you're going to have it here okay bum, bum. and just to show you that this is a valid mesh like so I will, I'm going to click here. It's going to generate the mesh inside the chicken. So maybe you are doing a structural analysis, elasticity, whatever you want to deform your chicken. So yeah, that might be the situation that you want an internal mesh. And voila, you have your mesh. Previously, recall here, it was getting an error. The mesh was leaking here, and anyway, not anymore. Uh, you put your cut plane and there you go. And you can add the boundary layer exactly the same way. I didn't add it, but you add it and it will work. If we check quality, look at that the quality 80 is acceptable for me but as you want to see where do you have those back quality elements likely i'm quite sure it should be here in the legs in the fingers it's close to the nails let's see um bam 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 i click here if i entity and let me see and actually as i, as I told you you have it there all those back quality should be there kind of after doing mesh for a really long time 
just by looking at your geometry, you can get an, an idea where you have that. And probably you make it larger or if you add the boundary layer, quite likely also in, in the big here, you're going to get bad, bad quality cells there or not bad quality, but let's say a little bit high. So this is it. And this is a perfect situation when using the surface wrap or, or the string wrap becomes handy. You don't have you have organic geometries, you don't have that topology, or probably you have too many, uh, too many errors on, on that underlying geometry. So it, it, it is easier just to wrap everything. Look at that. We fix here, but and you, I, I can click, I can keep click, clicking here and clicking here and joining, and maybe I will be able to 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 have all lines blacks and join everything. But it is a. a and it's for now you're wasting time and you have seen that doing the wrapping is quite fast. I have used it for very, very complicated geometries and it works very well. So this is it for this method. And I hope now that you have a clear idea of the difference between this and this. So this one, both of them are surface to volume. This one, you use it when you have a cat geometry, a clean water type geometry. Also, you can use it with a dirty geometry, as you see here, but, but you have to be careful that you need to close you know, those gaps. And so there is some manual intervention, a lot of manual intervention to fix those problems. And then you have the surface, right? That this one, you use it when you have a dirty geometry like this, you have holes and so on. So if for you it's difficult, you no. Know, to repair your geometry, go for this. But if you can repair for your geometry, stay with this method. So I think I cover all the options now in both the most important methods. Then we have this one, I think, let's say it's the uh, prepare, but this is another video, this one, but I don't recommend it. But this is this will be properly, you know, uh, a snappy X mesh. Improve it because you didn't have the transition, not the up three transition, the two to one or small cells to, to large cells. You see here in, in that icon that is adding a, a pyramid in that transition. So yeah, I will create the next video, a, a fast one. So yeah, that's all for this. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video. Bye.